What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be showing you how I built a teleprompter to help me record my videos. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, make sure you click that bell icon and subscribe so you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you've ever recorded videos before, or if you watch a lot of videos on YouTube, then you know there's a couple different ways that content creators like to record their speaking parts for their videos. Some people are able to just click record and start talking off the top of their head, and they end up with a pretty smooth video. You see this a lot in vlog or in-depth tutorial type videos, but that doesn't work for me. I like to have what I'm going to say written out so I can make sure that I cover everything and that it flows smoothly from beginning to end. So if you're like me and you write down everything you're going to say, then there's a couple different ways you can deliver it to the camera. First, you can memorize the entire script for all your videos and deliver it to the camera in full. The other option, and this is the method I started making videos with, is to read a line from the script and then deliver it to the camera. The last option that I'm going to talk about today is the use of a teleprompter. A teleprompter is essentially a separate screen that scrolls the script as the speaker is reading it to the camera. They're used all the time on bigger sets where the speaker is further from the camera, so it's harder to tell when they're not looking directly at the lens. But if I were sitting here this close to the camera and reading from my script while I'm recording, it'd be pretty off-putting for the viewer. This is where the one-way mirror type teleprompters come into play. This type of teleprompter was first invented by Hubert Schlafly. Schlafly, for the 1956 Democratic National Convention. Essentially, it reversed the text and reflected it off a one-way mirror that the camera sat behind. This way, when the speaker is reading the text off the screen, it still looks like they're staring directly at the camera. You can sometimes tell when somebody's reading off of this type of prompter, but for the most part, it's unnoticeable, which is why I decided to make one myself. For the brains of this project, I used an old Raspberry Pi 2 that I had laying around and the 7-inch touchscreen that I had from a previous project. You can definitely find a cheaper display that doesn't have a touchscreen, but I wanted to be able to control the prompter directly from the display. If you find one without a touchscreen, then a keyboard and a mouse will work just as well. For the glass, I used a spare bit of acrylic that I had left over from the enclosure that I built for my 3D printer. All of these parts fit into a 3D printed case that I designed that mounts onto a camera tripod. Not only does the case hold everything and mount to the tripod, but it also does a great job of blocking out most of the light. One of the requirements of this type of prompter is that it has to be darker on the camera side of the glass than on the speaker side of the glass. This way the camera can see right through the glass without picking up any glare or the text that's scrolling on the screen, and the speaker can't see the camera at all, but they can see the words reflected off the glass. If the case isn't doing a good enough job of blocking out all the light, then you can attach a black piece of fabric to the back of the case to block out the rest of the light. This way you can lift the fabric up and adjust any of the settings on your camera if you need to. I added a spot in the case so that I can mount my iPhone in there, which is what I currently use to record. On the bottom of the case, there's a square peg that fits into the quick release clamp on my tripod. This way I can quickly remove the case if I want to mount my iPhone or a camera directly to the tripod. Once I had the whole thing assembled, I started working on the software to control the scripts and scroll them on the screen. Now I wanted to be able to upload new scripts to the Raspberry Pi easily and control them directly from the touchscreen. With a background in web development, the most obvious solution to me was to make a website. I didn't want to waste too much time working on this website because it's being hosted on the Raspberry Pi, it's not going to see a lot of volume, and it doesn't have to be secure because there's no sensitive information on there. So I just threw together a quick Laravel application that's hosted on port 8000 on the Raspberry Pi. This way I can navigate to it on any web browser connected to the same Wi-Fi network as the Raspberry Pi using the IP address from the Pi. On the web page, I can view a list of currently uploaded scripts, delete them, or add new ones. To add a new one, I can just upload it from my computer and then play it back using the touchscreen on the prompter. The playback screen on the prompter has a few controls that allow me to change the scrolling speed, pause the script, or jump to the beginning or end of the script. All that's left is to configure the Raspberry Pi to boot into the Chromium web browser in kiosk mode. So once I had the Pi booting into kiosk mode and displaying the web page on the touchscreen, I could finally start using this thing as an actual teleprompter. If you're interested in copying this setup, 
I created step-by-step -step instructions on the GitHub repo for this project, which will help you get this thing running from scratch. I also created a Raspberry Pi image that you can flash to an SD card for an even easier setup. And that's it! I now have a fully functional teleprompter that I can upload new scripts to using any computer connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Now I can record dialogue for my videos quicker with fewer mistakes, which requires less post-processing. Check the description for links to this project, and let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video, or if you have any video ideas for me to make. Also, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.